Donnybrook is made possible by the members of the Nine Network. Thanks for joining us for another edition of Donnybrook. Great to have you with us. And thanks to our friends at the Gatesworth for making this program possible as you do week in and week out. Let's meet those assembled around the big green table for this edition, our first in November. The media veteran herself is with us, Wendy Weiss, along with... One of our founders, Mr. Bill McClellan from the St. Louis Post-Dispatch. And another one of our founders, the one and only Ray Hartman. And from STLMag.com and St. Louis American, Alvin Reed. Ray, the founder, we're going to start with you as a big uh, attention across the nation on the Senate race here in Missouri as the incumbent Claire McCaskill is being challenged by Josh Hawley, the Attorney General, and of course, that big debate was two weeks ago tonight on the Nine Network. So um, Claire McCaskill has an ad where she's saying that she doesn't identify with the crazies in the Democratic Party. Yeah. And Brett Baer of Fox News asked her, okay, who are the crazies? And she said, well, you know, one state senator who said that the president should be assassinated. Huh? She's referring to uh, state senator Maria Chappelle Nadell, who then, in terms we can't use here on the Nine Network, <laughs> right. threw an epithet right. back at... Uh, Claire McCaskill, I'm thinking if she's attacking people in her own party, not just through a slip of the tongue, but through a recorded advertisement, she must be in trouble. I'm no, talking about Claire McCaskill. Quite the opposite. Actually, I was surprised. 538.com, which I think, you know, polling's inexact, but it historically has been the most accurate, has, her, has a, Missouri as a toss-up state with Claire having a three to two chance of winning. You know, which she's got her up about 1.5 percent, which is really good because a lot of the other polls haven't had that. Um, she's absolutely, Claire is a moderate and, and she had every right and reason to attack, you know, extremism on her, in her party in Missouri. And I, the, one of the reasons I'm optimistic uh, about Claire is Trump is going to make a big difference one way or the other. His closing message is all about immigration. And I don't think in Missouri, and even Missouri, that's a particular, this is not one of the states that I think that closing argument, which is a bogus anyway, is gonna make a difference. I actually think Claire's gonna make it. Well, you know, talking about uh, State Senator Nadal again, and I, yeah. I hate to say anything bad about State Senator Nadal because she does seem unbalanced. But I, I, I don't think that this helps Claire McCaskill, because she, who desperately needs a large black turnout. And, and I'm concerned, because I'm rooting for the senator, right. I'm concerned that if the turnout is at all down, she, she won't win. Cause well, it, she got so few votes when she ran against Lacey. And when she's won, you look at the number of votes that she got, I don't think that that's a, a factor. Uh, also, you know, how does all, she keep getting reelected, though? I guess that's what's well, so puzzling. Well, that's people. what I mean. Right. She, right. Somehow she keeps winning, well, and no um, I just think that if you look at, I don't know when you said that, it threw my thought. I'm off. so I, it's sorry. All right. I, well, I lost let it. me say this: You so say sorry. that Claire McCaskill is a moderate, but on some important issues like Supreme Court, mm -hmm. she didn't vote for Gorsuch, right. didn't vote for Ka Kavanaugh, didn't vote for the tax cuts. So a lot of Republicans don't consider her all that moderate. They but think that she's liberal. And well, she, you, you bring up the immigration. This week, she moved to the center on immigration, mm -hmm. saying the president does have to defend the border. Look, also and, in that Fox News. Tell me, she, she's endorsed by the border agents. I mean, so she is not a uh, right. abolish, ice, open the borders kind of a person. She Look, she is liberal on some issues. She's clearly pro-choice, for example. She's clearly been for the LGBT community. I mean, she, she is liberal on a lot of issues, but she is, and again, it's empirical. She's relative to the, her party, mm -hmm. the fourth least liberal by any, me by conservative measures in her voting record. And one of the issues, as Bill points out, that she has been a centrist on, and I think it's a good thing, is on immigration, because we need comprehensive immigration reform, not 
open borders and and not this craziness oh, okay. Trump's talking if, about. And, and I I think your I think your loyalty to her is is great and your optimism is is wonderful. But if I'm if I am a Democratic voter, and with these midterms, with so much riding on these midterms, and there has been crazy behavior. I mean, no side, both all over the place. We can talk about crazy behavior on the right, on the left, yeah. wherever. But for her to throw Maria Chappelle Nadell under the bus like this, even though I agree with you, Bill, about Maria Chappelle Nadell, I think that means that she's got some internal numbers. I think she, and, and the fact that she said that the president has to do what he's got to do, I think that, I, I think that she knows that she's in trouble. I disagree. I, and I, and I, I mean, it could be the opposite. I mean, right. it's just like you're winning. You could be winning a race and you got a kick at the end. Like yeah. you say, a long distance race. I know where I'm at. But I got yeah. a little something left. Well, and I'm playing. And, it and, and look, look, look at uh, in the gubernatorial race of 16. Remember when uh, Chris Coster decided he didn't want to have further debates? Yeah. And we all wisely said, "Well, that's because and he must have polls showing that he's doing very well." And well, I know truth, Maria. I will say, though, keep in mind, I'm just thinking tired. of Reagan. You know what? The 11th commandment. I mean, you don't speak ill of. Of go ahead. I'm when Maria it. was censured, as she should have been, after calling for. Donald Trump's assassination in in September of 17 it was she it was almost universal on her party there were there were a couple of people that were offended and I understand because there was a white racist guy who had responded that didn't get censured at the time so there were some issues there but she does not speak okay, well, for the African American okay, community. Okay, well, let's talk uh, about Josh Hawley. Bill, you saw the debate uh, that was here at our Nine Network studios, and I think the consensus was that Josh Hawley handled himself very well, very articulate. And I will say, I, I did hear him on the Mark Reardon show this week. He sounds extremely confident. Uh, now, maybe that's Josh Hawley by nature, but uh, he doesn't seem like he's behind in any polls that he's seeing. Well, I thought uh, he did really well in the debate. It, you know, I don't agree with him on the issues. I, I sort of do. He, he's got good polling, I think, and he knows what people want to hear, and he says it. But, you know, he's smart, articulate. Uh, I thought he did terrific. And a matter of fact, I was reminded of, of Eric Greitens. I thought, this guy's as good as Greitens, you know, without the military resume. So I, 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 I like the idea, Ray, that Claire McCaskill is ahead in some poll, but if if I had to bet, this is Missouri, I, I would bet on Josh Hawley. Well, I might agree with Hawley on some issues, but he does come across to me as pretty prepackaged. And then when I read in the Kansas City Star that he's got, you know, pollsters and consultants from out of state who are running his office in Jeff City, which was a story this week, I thought, hmm, you know, and that combined with the fact that he didn't like professional politicians who kept climbing the political ladder and about nine months after he became attorney general he threw his hat in the race for the u.s senate yeah that, i mean that's talk started four months after he which is four. it's God really in. but but this is i mean we live in really bold bold crazy times and it, once upon a time maybe 10 15 years ago to to you know uh to to decry that kind of ambition and then to turn around and you know be as just as ambitious uh, I think today it's like, okay, he's he's going to take Claire, and so no matter what they say about him and no matter what misstep he makes, he's still my guy. And, and I think that's where we are today. I, I you talk about silos, Bill, that's think, where we are. I think I, Bill, has, Bill has coined his perfect campaign slogan for him, which is, I'm just like Eric Greitens. I think that would be a good slogan for him. And he was he was Eric in Greitens office. Won, Ray. Eric I know. Greitens well, won. I mean, we know how what a, how That's great government like, turned out to be. Anything goes. I mean, it's like anything anything goes. Right. And he, Wendy's he, exactly he, right. Nothing that was said in that debate here in these studios is going to change anybody's minds how they're going to right. vote. Quite frankly, it's just a matter of who goes out and actually votes yeah. the next Tuesday. Turn out the and That's why I said like to, to get worked up over. Well, he's. Smart and articulate. Well, the, the man's an attorney. Now, not all attorneys are smart and articulate, but at the same time, I'm not amazed that he could do well in a debate. Right. You okay. know, this is a, hey, it's it's a referendum okay. on Trump, yep. and, and, it it, and it's about turnout. And if you're okay with Trump, fine. If you're not, you need to turn out. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Alvin Reed, I want to ask you about Amendment 1, which will be the first amendment uh, facing, of course, the voters in Missouri next Tuesday. 
Amendment one's a little bit unusual because it, it has your, uh, it's going to limit campaign contributions and how, when a politician can lobby after leaving office, that sort of thing. But the big issue is that there's going to be a demographer who, one person is going to redesign the state House and Senate seats based on the previous voting patterns, quite partisan, from the three previous gubernatorial, senatorial, and presidential elections. So that if, let's say, Republicans win those on an average 55 percent, then the districts will have to be drawn up to somewhat reflect that, as opposed to having some districts like at 90 percent and the others at 40, whatever. Um, they still have to be con contiguous, compact, but one guy is going to be designing these. How do you feel about that? Well, you know, the, coming down to one person, maybe that, I don't know if that's the best way to go or not. I'm in favor of it. I'm going to vote for it. Now, uh, Lace Clay is against it. Uh, I think the majority of, of the black Democratic machine in Kansas City, you know, uh, is against it. And I'm somewhat surprisingly, uh, Shamed Dogan, who is a state senator here from uh, West County, is against it. All of them saying that this will limit black, uh, you know, representation in the state house. Well, for Shaman, I said, like, well, wait a minute. You don't live in a majority black district, and you won. Why would it be impossible for a black person from the city of St. Louis to do the same thing? I think that's kind of like, well, I'm not really like that kind of thing. And I have said on mm -hmm. the show, I mean, if we do ever redistrict, you know, the, the aldermanic uh, district in the city of St. Louis, I said they should be like stripes on a zebra. They should run from North St. Louis to far South St. Louis, so you have to run in every part of the city. It's like throwing up, like, we can't win if we're not in a majority black district. What and they're going to do, they're going to end up going from North St. Louis to Baldwin, because if they're going to achieve that sort of parity, well, I, I mean, no, I understand. That, that's I, where I, they're going to be I, going. I, that, well, they're going to be like little I, pasta strips yes, heading out from line, St. Louis. And I have no the, problem with that. Really? Yeah. Uh, the reason I'm for it is it does two things. We can always talk, every one of these, you can always fall, find fault with it. Oh, yeah. Always trying to make the enemy the perfect or the good. No. It does two things that need to happen. One is it diminishes, to some extent, the lobbyist. I mean, the lobbyists are always going to be there, but it makes it harder on the lobbyists to Well, they have to, to wait off. longer. Well, they have to wait longer, but they also have severe limitations and what they beyond buy. what they have right. as to what they can do to buy legislators right now. Mm -hmm. And that's one good thing. And the other good thing is it's a, it's a pushback against gerrymandering. It's not perfect, but those are two good causes, doing less ger gerrymandering and less lobbying. So I'm for it because it does both of those things Lacey to Cl some extent. Lacey Clay and I are against it. I don't know if it's for the same reason, but it, is, it, it gets back to that, that the, the partisanship. I mean, if you have any kind of an issue, if the, if the uh, if the Secretary of State's chosen demographer uh, has any kind of an issue, then it goes to the Senate leaders, the how you know the uh, Missouri Senate leaders, which is partisan, and, and then we're right back where we started. And you from. mean the auditors? The auditors. What auditors. did I say? It's the auditor. Secretary of State. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah the auditor. But that's so an well, interesting well, angle. What, what I, it, it isn't a great plan having one person do it, but right now we have the legislature do it, and I mean I'd rather draw one citizen out of a hat right. than trust it to the legislature. Right, right. I agree. All right, next topic. Let's move on to Prop B at the state level. There's a Prop B at the county level and one at the state. The state is the minimum wage, and, you know, it's seven eighty-five right now, Wendy. The mm -hmm. national minimum wage is seven fifteen. I don't think most people are working at seven eighty-five. Nonetheless, it would increase it over five years by 53%, which is a heck of of a jump in wages for an employer to pay. How do you feel about this? Well, considering that two years ago or so, the, you know, the, the organized fast food workers around the country that were having the walkouts, they wanted immediate $15. They wanted an overnight $15, or they wanted an increase to $15 an hour. I think that raising it to 860 and then 85 cents uh, for each year until 2023, bringing it up to $12, mm -hmm. 12, okay, $12, I think that's reasonable. I think that's reasonable, and I think this is actually one instance where some of these political ads, like Charlie O'Reilly of O'Reilly Auto Parts, who is from Springfield, uh, I believe he's something of a, you know, I mean, he's, he's a businessman, and his, I think his voice has been kind of effective in, in this particular campaign. It's, it, is, it is reasonable. You don't want to have to force small businesses to jump quite that fast and quite that far 
this to me I, makes sense. I agree. And one of the things that doesn't get stated enough, that I, I was against the $15 jump right away too. This is gradual, it's fair. And the other thing is good for economic development because disproportionately minimum wage earners spend their money locally at other small businesses. So that money is, uh, as opposed to people taking it on trips and leaving, that, that money, that, that little 85 cents, which is not going to kill any businesses, is, is, well. is good. It's not. And, and it's going to, <laughs> to recirculate among those businesses. You know, it so may not kill I, the businesses, I think it's, I think but it's a good idea. Isn't it possible that employers will hire fewer people, fewer teens, that, I mean, look at Schnooks right now. They've got a robot going up and down. Yeah, but that ain't the got that's, that's not because of the minimum wage. Yeah, yeah. It does. No, it does. Because no. as wages go that's up, Schnucks is different job. because it's union. Those have higher jobs. <laughs> but those are higher wages already, right. Schnucks. Panera, McDonald's, all automated right now, one way or the other. <laughs> and the higher the wages, the greater incentive to get the automation. The, the, in fact, the St. Louis Fed just this week had a report that. In the next 20 years, 60% of St. Louis jobs yep. can be automated. Yeah, but that, that, that's going to be no, no matter what. I mean, I, I, I think the, the minimum wage thing makes a lot of sense. And long term, because of automation, we've got to come up with new plans, Charlie. But for right now, raising the minimum wage is good. And it may not, cost of living may not match what the raise is, but there is every year it costs more to do the same things. So thus, when you're talking about uh, 50%, it will not be 50% by the time we get to the you know, $12, it'll probably be more like 20%, 12%, because the cost of things is going to go up. So it's just matching well, cost of living. That's but another you, thing. When you raise the wages, the service or the good that comes out of that business is going to cost more. So there's that hidden cost, too, for the consumers, who then will have to take more out of their pocket to buy the hamburger. Well, I many mean, of those I did consumers go to school, and I know how pocket. capitalism works, Charlie, right. Right, right? But trying to give somebody a raise so they have some more money in they, their pocket right. is not a bad thing. Well, I um, mean, unless there's yeah. that hidden person who loses the job because the employer can't afford that fifth or well, sixth employee. Well, this Christmas season, we but, want you to watch yeah. A Christmas Carol. <laughs> well, I want you to watch it for the person who loses the job. Will be open. Right. Well, all right. Well, I want to ask you, Alvin, about Prop B in the county. Prop B in the county is, has nothing to do with the minimum wage. It has to do with the St. Louis County Council. And the council, uh, earlier this year, had its budget withheld by the county executive. So this measure would change the charter so that the county council would have more control over the purse strings of the county. Are you in favor of it? Yes, I am. And I think it's, it has a lot to do, quite frankly, with what has gone on in the county for the last four years. Um, not to make it like a national issue out of this, but if you changed the House or the Senate and it was like Democratic, they would take actions to try to limit what the president was doing. I think we have the exact same situation in St. Louis County in that the county executive has just put the council in a situation where we have got to take control because this is madness right now. And I, I think most of the voters in St. Louis County will approve of that. I take the opposite view because I think that the county executive, whether you like this particular one or not, I, I don't think it's been as dramatic a departure from county executives in the past, quite frankly. But the fact is, and I, and I think he's done a good job, actually, but mm. I think that, no, I do. Well, I'm sorry. <laughs> but do you, but read the, I'm sorry. do you read the paper? Yeah, I think he's been I fine. Okay. I think he's done a good job, but we can, yeah, people be voting. My point is this, that, that I think it, there's a, the charter set it up to where you have a county executive who has that ability to transfer money, and I think it's a kind of wonkish issue. I'll tell you what should be passed, though, are the campaign fine limits, mm. Uh, uh, campaign contribution limits, which is in the charter they amendment, it, yeah. and also requirements of things being posted online, those make sense to pass. But uh, those aren't strong enough. You know, well, I, think I think if you've fine. got a contract with the county, as opposed to the current situation, yeah. you, you, you shouldn't be giving money to the county executive. And that, you know, Steve Stanger's a nice guy, although he seems to have had some problems communicating with members of the council and the mayor of St. Louis, the previous mayor. But I just think that there's too many of his donors have been rewarded with contracts. And I'd like to see really strong language so that, hey, if you're doing business with the county, you cannot give to any That's got nothing to, to do officials. with this amendment. Well, well no. It's similar. I, I, it's, I, I, it's, I, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, no, no. I'm just going to say, like, there's three of them. somebody's got to come. Somebody's got to take oh. control of the county government because it's out of control right now. And well, if it's the council, that's fine with me. And I... 
think I, I would just disagree with your assessment of his communication skills. I don't think he thinks he has to communicate with certain people, and and that's the problem. The county council's pretty dysfunctional. You have to, if you follow We've been put in a pretty awkward yeah. position. Yeah. What are they supposed to do? Right. All right. Okay. So does well, Albert ever vote Republican? He does in a few races. <laughs> yeah. Hi, well, Paul Barry. How about, uh, are you going to vote for Paul Barry? Yes, I am. Okay. Crazy well, as it sounds. Paul Barry <laughs> yeah. is, uh, 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 what, what is he by trade, a bail bondsman? I think so. And I think he's uh, the Republican opposition right. for Steve Stanger. Yeah. All right. And you've never used his services personally. No, I have no. not. I, hopefully <laughs> no. never. Not yet. Well, what about, uh, speaking of um, the county, it's the big zoo tax coming up uh, this week where county residents have a chance to increase their sales tax by one-eighth of a percent to contribute an extra $20 million a year to the zoo. Do you think it's going to pass, Elvin Reed? I do. I'm yay zoo. I think it will, too. Yes, I'm going to vote for it, and I think it will pass. I'm not going to vote for it because I think the sales tax is already too high, and it affects the poor too much, but I think it's going to pass. My vote is sacred, so it's secret, but I'm going with my buddy Ray Hartman here. Well, I'm definitely voting against it, and keep in mind, folks, it's $20 million a year in perpetuity. It'd be one thing. Well, now, Ray, to help we were just saying it. whether or not we're doing it. We're right. not giving the, the pitch. pitch right. Right. Oh, exactly. I just did. Right. So the answer okay. is yeah. it's All right. very yeah. important to vote, Bill vote no. But I would guess that it's going to pass. What do you think about uh, action taken by the city last week to hire a Boston firm to tell the city of St. Louis how it might energize itself for economic development and grow jobs? I don't like it. I, I hate to sound so provincial, but for economic development and consultants. I think there's plenty of people in St. Louis that could do it. We've got a couple of uh, schools that are, you know, have economics departments that are good. I, I don't think we have to go to Boston to have people in Boston who don't really know much about St. Louis tell St. Louis how to economically develop. Well, McClellan Reed could basically sit Absolutely. everybody down That's and right. tell them, hey, first of all, you got too much crime. But you want to do something about that? Second, improve the schools. Three, you'll attract more businesses. But don't done, you think, right? I mean, people, people from inside the area have been saying that for a long time and still. Well, what do you think the people say? from Boston are going to say? Right. Other than, where's my check? But, you know, but like, right, they I, don't have any, you know, okay, they, if they only you had a harbor yeah. like we did. Yeah. Why don't you have some Revolutionary War yeah. stuff? Yeah. Yeah, that's right, you don't. I, right. I, I know. truly don't believe we need a study. I mean, in other words, it's not it's another one of one. those. I mean, and I, I, don't disagree, Bill. We we this is but we've been on the air for thirty seven years. We were talking about studies in the eighties on this show. We'd always be we there was at the time we felt like the only all the wisdom was in the eastern time zone, you know, and it, it's like we don't need a study for economic development. This is but, to me it's a lot of this. We have a lot of different agencies that that address this. Well, and, do they? Yes, they do. And How they, how's I, that working out? Well, I mean, I think actually when you look at the cortex and you look at some no, of the things true. being done in biotech, yeah. I think things are, go, are doing, we, we but, have limitations. But, but you know what? That but, cortex but, was based on something out of Cambridge, Mass. Okay. And you look at some of the successes in but St. Louis, can, the founding of the Post-Dispatch, the Missouri right. Town Garden, Anheuser-Busch, uh, the Arch, all done by people from out of the city. Well, yeah, but I'm not know, saying we don't want to attract talent here, Charlie. Yeah. I'm just saying I don't think we need, you know, economic studies to be done elsewhere to tell us what you to know, do. You know, one, one, one way to find best practices is to Google. I mean, you can get online and see best practices. You don't need to spend hundreds of thousands or millions of dollars on some firm. The best practices are out there well, if you want to. Well, the mayor of Kansas City ran, the last time he ran, he was, would run for re-election. He said, I'm running on getting the airport together, and we're going to do it, and we're going to have a plan in like 18 know. months, and he did it. And he said, I'm running on this instead of running from it. And that's what St. Louis needs. St. Louis doesn't need to go to Boston to get some ideas, they need somebody to step in and say like, hey, you're going to do what I tell you to do or you're not going to be here and we're not playing buddies and we're not playing favorites and taking care of the same All old right. people. All right, okay, now one, one more topic. Uh, and we, we had a terrible weekend in Pittsburgh in the Squirrel Hill, Hill neighborhood where senseless tragedy at the Tree of Life Synagogue. Wendy, I learned that the St. Joseph Church in Cottleville, one of the largest in the archdiocese, now has uh, armed guards at the Sunday services. In fact, there's a police car that's parked in front of the front door every Sunday. Is this where we're at right now? I think it is. I think it is where we are right now, and it's it it is tragic, but it is it's it is reality. And the uh, the Jewish Community Center and Village Shalom in 
a suburb of Kansas City. The Kansas City Star had a story this week about the fact that they have plain clothes people in their synagogues, uh, in, in some synagogues, certainly not all synagogues. But to, to keep people safe, uh, to act as a deterrent for a, a possible assailant, do it, I mean, in my opinion. I, I mean, this is just personal. I, I can't have it. I just don't think I would attend a church that had an armed guard in it or, or undercover police officers, you know, carrying guns within my, my sanctuary. I'm just, I'm just totally But what about outside that. in the parking lot to have a police car just as a, hey, you know, uh, think twice. Maybe, if but I'm just, I know, what is faith about? If, if I can't practice it in a church, then what's the point? I just, that's how I feel about it. I, no guns. I don't want any guns around my church. I, you know what? I have no objection to any church, any synagogue wants to have armed guards. That's it's just fine. But the solution, however politically incorrect it is to say, is at some point to address gun control and reduce the amount of armaments in this country. It's not going to solve it all overnight, but the solution we ought to be talking about is gun control. Period. Well, you know, Kirkwood City Hall had a armed police officer mm -hmm. when uh, Cookie, Cookie Thornton, Thornton shot it up. I mean. There's no complete defense, I'm afraid. It's, it's just, it's church. It's a sanctuary. Right. It's got to be that. I'm sure we'll take a few phone calls out on your turn, but first let's find out what viewers had to say about last week's program. We heard from John Johnson who wrote, I'd be more supportive of a straightforward road and bridge proposition than this political dump cake. Mr. Johnson's in St. Louis County. LM Diefendeifer wrote from St. Louis, should we hold the zoo hostage when it wants to invest more in our area until everyone agrees how to help fund its research? The answer is a definite no. And we heard from Dick Lodge of Baldwin who wrote, I learned in kindergarten not to talk when someone else is talking. Did the Donnybrook Five all skip kindergarten? You can write us care of KETC 3655 Olive Street, St. Louis, Missouri 63108. Don't forget those emails, letters at KETC.org and those tweets. Hashtag Donnybrook STL because Alvin and I will be reading those in just a few minutes uh, on Donnybrook, your turn. And so we look forward to hearing from you. You can call right now or start tweeting and we'll be reading those in a matter of moments. Uh, everybody, we'll see you again next week, but don't tune away because Donnybrook, your turn is next. Donnybrook is made possible by the members of the Nine Network. It's November, and it's your turn. Charlie Brennan and Alvin Reed, thank you for being with us this evening. We're going to start with Denise in Summerfield. Hi, Denise. Hi, how are you? Just Good. fine. I just, I just wanted to make a comment about Bill McCullen when he agreed with not going to Boston mm -hmm. for that uh, survey thing. I was fortunate enough in the small town of Summerfield, Illinois, which is like 400 people, to receive grants from St. Clair County, uh, for our park and the equipment we put in was very basic but the last grant i wrote was huge this huge piece of playground equipment and i knew there was no way we could do it it had to be safe i called the company and they wanted eight thousand dollars i was like how are we going to do this i drove from summerfield to siu edwardsville i met with the dean of engineering they made an they made an engineering project for their class they come up there on a bus they put it together for free over the Pretty weekend mm -hmm. and they got credit for it and you saved Smart. your community eight thousand dollars. Eight thousand, a little over eight thousand dollars, and some of yeah. Bill didn't have eight thousand dollars. So. Yeah, I know. Hey, yeah. Wait, but, um, wait. St. Louis doesn't have eight thousand dollars. St. Louis doesn't have Denise. <laughs> right. well, yeah. What was your title, by the way? Were you the mayor? 
No, I I was I'm just a little citizen. I just well, you, I, you should I, run I for mayor. Done. Yeah, four more years. That'd be no, a smart no, idea. No, I've, ma- actually, ma- I've actually got I've actually gotten um uh almost a quarter of a million dollars. Okay, I got uh, put I could we put a bathroom in a walking trail a basketball court but that one big huge piece of playground equipment it was like there is no way. All right. It, I mean it looked like. Hey, you got to get your phone. I, I, I did, I did. All right. Thanks I, a lot, Denise. We're going to move on. Thank you so much. Sound like the ice cream trucks in their neighborhood. Are, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Let's go to Henry in Farmington. Hi, Henry. Hello, gentlemen. How are you tonight? We're Just good. Fine. We're good. My question is about the minimum wage. Mm-hmm. There is already a minimum wage increase, and I've read through Prop B, and I can't find where one is going to cancel the other one out because – they're saying that the one that's on the books is for a cost of living adjustment. Yes. Okay. Well, is that going to be in addition to the 85 cents? No, because I think this will now become like um, state statute, like the people voted on it as opposed to the legislature approving it. That's how I understand it. They both won't happen. One will supersede the other, and that would be if it passes. Uh, then this is what will become the law. If it doesn't pass, then those cost of living uh, increases would, would continue. Okay? Do you know where it says that? Because I can't find it. And the other thing is, did you know that Prop B, the, the proposition, also exempts the state of Missouri employees from receiving $12 an hour? Seriously? I can believe yeah. that. Well, that's that's a bunch of bunk. I, I, true, but I also don't think there's anybody that makes minimum wage who works for the state of Missouri. So yeah, uh, I, I, I don't hope not. Yeah, right, right. right. Yeah, okay. Mm-hmm. All right, let's hey, go to Chris in Eureka. Hi, Hi Chris. Chris. Hey guys, hey Alvin, I'm the guy that took a selfie with you last week at the parking lot. Oh, you hi. Remember. <laughs> How you doing, man? Yeah, listen, uh, uh, and I agree with you also, Alvin, on the uh, guns in church. I think it's a very sad testament to our country where the only solution to guns and the gun violence is more guns. Mm-hmm. I think uh, I think we need more gun regulations and uh, certainly background checks. But uh, the answer is it more guns. I okay. think that's it's a real sad yeah. testament to our country. That's, that's uh, in fact even in the in the Wild West. You had to check your guns at the, at the sheriff's office when you came into town. Yeah, I, I agree. It's now, interesting. No. I, I do want to point out there, my, my feelings on this have nothing to do with, with the Second Amendment or anything. This is just kind of like my own little religious philosophy in that that's why I feel so strongly about it. This is really not, to me, an argument about Second Amendment and, and guns and more guns or anything. Just like, not here. Not in this place of worship. I just, I'm just not down with that. So and I, I would, I, I, I did talk to uh, the Monsignor who runs St. Joe's Parish in uh, Cottleville, and the armed guard is not exactly in the room where the worshiping is going on or the Catholic Mass. He's kind of a, in a like a gathering area that's just outside the front doors. So I don't know. That might make some people feel a little bit better. But unfortunately, we have had too much violence in places of worship, haven't we? Uh, let's go to uh, Al in Florissant. Hi, Al. What do you say? Hey, you guys. I uh, love the show. Uh, Charlie, I try to listen to you every chance I get. Thank you. Um, and I, I've been watching Donnie Brook forever. But uh, one thing about guns and the thing about the minimum wage, mm-hmm. the thing about guns is they're, they're everywhere. I have a bunch of them. You're never going to get rid of them. Uh, if guns kill people, we would just send guns to war, okay? Uh, we wouldn't have to send people there to do the job. And the thing about the minimum wage, it seems to me, and I don't want to diss anybody on min- minimum wage, but it seems to me like if you're still making minimum wage, you have put probably minimum effort into this deal. And I've been in the union trades for 36 years, and we are dying for people. We are, we are, we, I've got two guys at the gas station that I go to every night. I've got them in the union now because they asked me what I do, you know, mm-hmm. and I, I told them, and I got, I got them letters of intent. Almost every construction trade in St. Louis is dying for apprentices, and we cannot find them. That's every true. union meeting I go to, you know, bring your, your cousin, your, your neighbor, someone. We're, we're dying for apprentices. We're trying to teach you. You got insurance. You got good pay. You have everything. But you have to tie your shoes up, and you have to come to work. Okay. You know what I'm saying? And thanks, we just, yeah, we thanks just for the call. Find it. That's a lot and of we, industries, not just oh, the I trades. Think. Yeah, you're right. I mean, uh Trucking, big labor shortage, uh, data like coders, big labor shortage, 
In fact, I think we have almost a million unfilled jobs in the United States right now. But, you know, some people are on minimum wage. But uh, hopefully for those people, it's a starter wage that leads to something better. But that's how it should be. Yes. All right, Donna and St. Genevieve. Hi, Donna. Yes, hello. Thank you for taking my call. Um, I'm actually amazed as, as to why anyone would not vote to raise the minimum wage. Uh, in small towns like St. Genevieve, a lot of the jobs are minimum wage. And, um, you know, if, if you can't drive out of town for whatever reason, then that is your choice. You know, that, that is your only option is to make minimum wage. Now, I know that there's a number of people that are working, would work a minimum wage, but that whole salary goes for child care. So they opt not to take the job for minimum wage simply because they're working you know, just to uh, have their children go to a babysitter. So they stay at home, take care of their children. Uh, the spouse makes the money. They end up having to get on food stamps, you know, EBT or whatever, simply because you're working simply for child care. Okay. Yeah. No, I hear you. Th th thanks. Uh, your, your comment's probably directed to me because I'm the guy who uh, wasn't in favor of the increase because I think 50% in five years is, is pretty steep. But, you know, we kind of assume that a lot of businesses are have pretty good margins and they're making good money. But what about the business that has a very thin margin and might even be losing money? Now, for that person to see the wages of the employees go up, that could be a real burden. And it could also result in some people losing their jobs, uh, however low those wages are for those jobs. Okay, we have some tweets. Yes, we do. Referee 922, politics should not be all about political parties. Candidates have to toe the line or they are out. What happened to the personal integrity of the person? Of course, money is the key for most races. And we heard from Emery Cox 4. Why are the panelists more concerned about businesses than workers? Well, that should be panelists, not plural. <laughs> and Sister Sarah 23. Instead of calling it a minimum wage, why can't we call it a living wage? People have the right to a fair wage. You can send us a tweet. Hashtag Donnybrook STL. On to David in Park Hill. No, I'm sorry, Ann in St. Louis. Hi, Ann. Hi, how are you? Just Good. fine. And thank you for taking my call. Thank you. I am calling about the debate that you, uh, with uh, Holly, uh, Josh, and uh, mm -hmm. Senator McCaskill. I personally didn't think, I mean, he might have, you know, did some good floor showing, but he never did answer direct questions in that debate. And I think... Uh, for sure, I believe Claire has really put Missouri on the map more than any senator I know during my lifetime about some major issues. And uh, for a neophyte to say that he had experience, he barely even finished a whole year as attorney general. So I would like to have some comments about that. Okay. Well, I, I kind of felt the same way myself. You know, I thought that uh, he got into the office as the attorney general and immediately said he was running for higher office. And that's completely the opposite of what, what he had said he was going to do. In fact, he blasted politicians who did that. But uh, I guess that didn't matter too much to many Republicans who made him the nominee. And, uh, you know, he might have some great ideas. I can't deny that he's uh, very intelligent, but you can't say that he's uh, experienced. But I'm not sure that really matters to a lot of voters. It does not. It does not. Party identity, it's just a driving factor right now. But thank you very much. Okay, David, it's your turn. You're in Park Hills. Hi, Dave. Hey, how are you guys doing? I've been watching Donnie Burke for years. I thank you for taking my call. Sure. I think maybe we ought to take China and, and Japan as an example. For the first three years of childhood education, they teach politeness and compassion. I know with the education budget, budgets that are being cut, this is going to be hard to introduce new curriculum. But I think if we taught uh, uh, mandatory compassion and politeness, there would be a trickle-up effect with less gun shootings in schools, less violence. It may even change the course of society in a tearful up effect. And um, it may even, you know, prevent some of the pro-war, you know, things that we're okay. doing. It's just my opinion. Thank you very much. You know what? I never really thought about that. And I, I, I understand what he's saying. That how about we start, you know, we take for granted that people are going to be polite. Well, maybe, maybe we're past that point. Maybe we have to you teach mean, people what being polite is about. You mean as opposed to having Fight Club in our yeah, daycare? Yeah, right. 
which we did right. not discuss. And we didn't discuss because we had no uh, disagreement on it. And I don't mean to laugh because that was just hideous. But yeah. there was a daycare in mm. St. Louis City, which got some attention this week, national attention, because it pitted four-year-olds against each other in, like, boxing. Yeah. One boy fell to the ground and another was still pummeling him with the, you know, it was an inflated glove, to be sure, but it's still not a pleasant experience at all. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Lou in U City. How you doing, Lou? Hey, hey. Hi, guys. Hi. Um, listen, I'm the, uh, the chair of Missouri Business for a Fair Minimum Wage, and I just wanted you to know that the reason uh, state workers are not covered by Prop B is because it's illegal. Only the legislature can change the wages of state workers. Okay, and that, that makes sense. So we put well, which workers you could put into it, okay? Now, now Elvin says that makes sense. I do not believe it makes sense, but I, I bet it's the, mm. I bet it is the reason. But again, politicians make laws that affect everyone but themselves. True. That's right. True. <laughs> Once again. But I just don't. If, if there were, if there's a state employee out there making minimum wage, I. Yeah, it and might be. Before all I know, like, and I, there are probably some jobs that maybe there are state workers making minimum wage. Probably. I doubt it. Yeah, I doubt it. But, you know, so maybe it's an argument that there is no right or wrong because the situation doesn't exist. Hey, thanks a lot for the call, Lou. Ron's in Augusta. Hi, Ron. Hi, Ron. Hey, guys. How you doing? Just Great. Fine. I always enjoy the show. Thank, Thank you. you. Hey, um, you know... We listened to Claire McCaskill talking about, you know, the nuts in her own party, and she really got a pass on this because she had such a crazy nut in this Chappelle, she could call her out. I'm wondering what other nuts they were talking about. That's a plural, and I think there's a lot more of them that she should have pointed out. Well, she did, and she talked about uh, those who shout people down in restaurants. Right, and, you know, we're my wife and I are pretty conservatives, and but still to let, you know, Ray, no, we still support the minimum wage. We support the zoo. And to some degree, we support Ray's view on gun control. Our idea of gun control is hitting the X in the target every time. Okay. All right. Thank you very much, Ron. Let's go to Jenny in St. Charles. Hi. Can you hear me? Yes, we sure can. can. Hi, Jenny. Go right ahead. Oh, okay. Um, on economic development, I would ask you to challenge the local universities to make it a class project, not just one university, but several, for them to come up with ideas for economic development. Make it a school project. It's what uh, the first caller of the night said, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, she had a project. She went to uh, SIUE, I think she said, for some advice and guidance and saved her city about $8,000 or so. That's true. I, I will could say, do that. I will, I will say this about Washington University, St. Louis University, all the ones around here, okay? The region would have to, if you're going to commission them to do it, then the region has to stay out of it. Because the first thing they're going to get is, well, you can't do that. And they'll give all the reasons you can, but it'll come down to because the people I want to be involved in this, yeah. well, you left them out. So you have to put them in. And I, I don't really favor going to Boston, but at the same time, I think that uh, there's just too many favors. And well, there's too many people with the, that always get taken care of. In some way, we have to break that chain. Now, either it starts in, you know, the leadership quarters of our region or that we need to go someplace else and get it done. You know, um, the, the, the dirty, dark secret of a consultant's report is the following. And this was explained to me by a friend who's a consultant in San Francisco and has clients all over the country. When you assess the problems of a business, the one thing you make sure is that the person paying for the report is not the problem. In other words, the consultants will come in here, they'll take the money, and they'll find lots of problems in St. Louis, but none of them will be the people who commission the report, the they, politicians. Yes, right, exactly. Otherwise, they won't get picked for the next report. Right. More right. tweets. Three, oh, we have tweets. McGee, 926, we need a bipartisan group, not individual, to redistrict Missouri. More than one person is required to keep a project bipartisan. And we heard from... FMF, STL, Ray's right. Too many guns. That's the problem. When will we ever confront the real problem? Until we do, there will be no real solution. And from Cressley M, people should treat each other with more respect. Politics has become a reality show. We need our president and others to be presidential 
and respectful. Once again, hashtag DonnyBrookSTL. Send us a tweet. I, uh, I do agree that the prevalence of too many guns in the wrong hands is a problem, but I do also know there are some states like Vermont that have a lot of firearms and they don't have homicides. In fact, Montpelier, their, their capital, just had its first homicide like last year, first since 1926. So I think it's, I think it's too many guns in the wrong hands. For real? Yeah. 1926? Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah. I, that, you know, it's a small town. I, I understand that, big. but yeah, most small towns, they don't date back to 1926 yeah. for their last murder. That's, that's interesting. Not to read up on that. David, Creep Core, how you doing, David? I'm doing fine. Thanks for taking my call. Go right ahead. I was uh, calling about the uh, Clean Missouri Amendment mm -hmm. and gerrymandering. Uh, that is an issue that I think is a big problem in, in the nation is the construction of the gerrymandered districts. But I looked at Missouri, and I looked up the, the rules, and we have a bipartisan, uh, not a bipartisan commission. It might be legislators. I don't remember exactly the details. But it was a bipartisan group that established those uh, districts. And I looked at them, and they looked pretty contiguous to me. I mean, not that there isn't some gerrymandering in populated areas particularly, but they're not supposed to cross county lines and they're supposed to use geographic boundaries. And when I look at the districts, they look pretty good to me. And while the rest of that bill is good, I just, I'm concerned about one person being in charge of that entire uh, entity there. Okay. I, I, no, I hear you. I, it seems like you come up with something better than, than one person at, you know, but at the same time, I'd have to see what the map turned out. And I think that I'm going to give this one person, be it a he or a she, the benefit of the doubt, because that's what they're entrusted to do or hired to do or appointed to do. Or, and I, mm -hmm. I, I'd have to see the map before I can say it's really a hideous idea. What's kind of funny in Missouri is that even though we have super majorities in the House and the Senate in Jeff City that are Republican, you would think, oh, well, most of the state's Republican. But in fact, just a little more than 50% is Republican based on voting trends. And what happens is you've got, let's say, these state district, uh, the, these districts in the city where they might be 80, 90% Democratic, right? And for many people, that's a complete waste because all you need to get a Democrat in there is 50%. And then extra 35, 40% could be better spent in some other district. And that's the whole idea behind this redistricting to kind of level out those districts. Because if you've got a state representative district with, you know, let's say it's, could be rural too, it could be 95% Republican. Well, the Republicans could use that extra. 45% in some other close district and maybe get that seat. True. And that's why I have a problem kind of with what, uh, you know, Congressman Clay and those in the Kansas City side are, you know, saying that they're against it in that it, it almost sounds like they're saying like, well, if we can't have a black Democrat in that seat, we don't want a Democrat at all. And that doesn't make any sense to me. That just makes no sense. Okay. Ed, in, uh, how you doing, Ed? Hello there. Hi. Hi. Yes, I was talking about the uh, was it guns in the churches and the schools. Just churches. That's what we're and talking they, about. The churches. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, I mean, what is what is the problem with them having it in churches? I know. I mean, how I many mean, lives can Ed, somebody save with having a gun I, in the church? Okay, Ed, when you're, somebody comes in there and starts shooting up the place. I hear you, Ed. What I'm saying is this: this is a personal kind of like feeling I have about why I go to church and what faith is about. I am not lecturing anybody about guns in schools or anything like that. I'm standing on what I personally believe. It is, I'm not having a national gun argument here, okay? I'm just having a, this is why I go to church and what my faith is about. So I just want to put that out there. I'm not really here to debate gun control or guns or, or mm. anything like that. That was a personal testament to what I believe. So I think uh, I think you're on, clear. you're on record once. I remember we were talking about yeah. uh, open carry in Missouri, and mm -hmm. you said that if someone brought in a firearm in a restaurant, mm -hmm. you would be opposed to that. I was opposed, yes. Yeah. Nothing I can do about it now, but, yeah, even before that, I, I, I'm totally opposed to that. 
Hey, let's go to Eddie from Ed to Eddie. Hi, Eddie. Hey, how you guys doing today? Good. Just fine. I'm, I'm calling about gun control in the United States of America. Look what happened today in the Dollar General on Grand. Someone went in there not too far from where you film your turn, killed the worker in Dollar General on Grand and Kasu today. Look what happened with Dylan Ruth when he went into a church, a black church, and killed all those people. Look what happened in Pittsburgh. We need to do something about gun control in the United States of America. And let's talk about this guy, Holly. He wasn't fair when he answered those questions last week uh, on you guys' channel. He's not true about health care because the Republicans voted about 70 times to uh, pull the rug on the ACA, Affordable Health Care, Obamacare. And now he's saying, oh, I'm all for the Affordable Care Act. They don't want to give us a break to people who okay. low income. Hey, Eddie, one, Eddie one, real quick. All right. Do you, I, I don't know if you go to church, but if you do attend church, the church you go to, you don't mind if somebody has a gun in, in your church. Yes, I do. Okay. All right. That's that. All right. That's the question. That. Thank you. Let's go to JP, North County. Hi, JP. Hi there. Uh, I was very surprised that Bill thought Josh Hawley did so well. I sat there and watched him, hoping to get some context out of him. I did not hear him answer any questions. All I heard him do was constantly attack Claire McCaskill and then compare to other people. And the only thing that he's changed his opinion on is the uh, pre-existing condition, which if you go back and study his whole history, he has talked at forums and other places totally against it. Now, him and his wife are always going to have commercial insurance, so it's not really an issue for them. But I really thought that him coming down off the podium up to them, myself personally, I didn't like it. I thought he should stay up there, talk to them, and answer the question. Okay. And that's where I thought Bill was totally different. He, he, we must have been watching two different debates is all I can say. Okay. Uh, okay? I, I think a lot of people thought that he did very well in that debate. And uh, what, one aspect that uh, I questioned was at the beginning when he was here at Channel 9, which is where the debate was, he said, <laughs> I'd like to thank uh, KSDK and all its partners for hosting this debate. And I was like, what? You mean KETC, but anyway, yeah, you know, let's move on. It's Frank in Spanish Lake, what do you say? Uh, yes, um, I just wanted to tell you, I think they're making a big mistake on the taxes. I think it's taxes on gas is a mistake. People need gas. What we need to put taxes on is tobacco and gun stores. Mm. That's where you need your higher taxes. Things you don't need. Bullets, guns, magazines, and and tobacco. Okay. Stop and think. How about how about beer and wine? Well, I that's that's not the worst. The worst thing is I think Frank likes his beer and wine. Will kill you. Yeah, yeah, it will. Okay. So a lot of things Thanks. will. Now, the tobacco tax, that would pass 10 times before we put a tax on guns in Missouri or liquor. So we may, might, let's fixate on that cigarette tax because we've got one of the low, probably the lowest one in the United States of America. We don't even manufacture cigarettes here. So that never made sense to me. Nancy in Shrewsbury. Hi, Nancy. Nancy? Nancy's. Yes. Go ahead, Nancy. Go right ahead. Oh, yes. Well, um, I wanted to uh, thank you for taking my call, and I wanted to make a suggestion. I, in good conscience, cannot vote for Steve Stenger for county executive, and I was planning on writing in Mark Montavani's name. Okay. And I, that was a, an option for some people to consider. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you very thank much. You. I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to vote for the Republican, but I didn't think about that, so maybe I... Maybe I will. I don't know how to do write-in, though, because I do the computer screen. There must be room there. There must you. be some. I don't know. Okay. All right. We'll figure it out. I think we have time for one more phone call. Let's see if we can uh, squeeze Karen in. Hi, Karen. You're in St. Louis. Yes, I am. Thank you for taking my call. Thank you. Uh, I have two comments and one question. I firmly believe in term limits for uh, elected officials. I firmly believe in contribution limits for elected officials. And did Claire McCaskill really say that everyday Americans can afford their own planes? I'll hang up and listen to your response. 
Thank you. I, I don't think. I, I mean, I'm not sure about I'm that. I'm not sure. Know. I'm not sure. Well, Charlie, you know, we're coming up on the end of the election season. I'd like to say that I thought our callers, Donnie Brook fans, acted very cordially toward each other. Very civil. Opinions, very civil. And we hope. Very that, intelligent. Hope we led that charge. But uh, we appreciate that very much. And thank you for watching Donnie Brook. And Donnie Brook, your turn. We'll see you next week.